Check it out, everybody. We're here at the Kiss Fest, and we're here with no other than Big John Hart, security for Kiss. Right? Go yes, ahead. sir. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, it's um, it's a good time down here. It's, it, this is really cool. Right before the, the cruise, I was on the cruise two years ago. Wow. And it's really a, an experience. Are you coming if, this year? No, no. Oh, okay. If you're if you're a Kiss fan, though, you should definitely try to get on one of them. Yeah. Because it's really a good experience for you. You know, I mean, you have you're tangible to the band, not exclusively, yeah. but I mean, everybody's in the same mindset. The entertainment's fantastic. There's an interest, yeah. interest. And 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 you have yeah, and you have the um, the the availability of being with people who are like-minded. So there's no possibilities of. Uh, I mean, there's always a possibility, but there's no you don't see no no people getting drunk and stupid and you know carrying on want to beat each other up or hitting on your old lady and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's what we got you here. Yeah, you're yeah, a security well, yeah, guy, you know. You just throw you overboard. <laughs> you Simple. look great, you know. I uh, feel pretty good. Yeah. I've had some, uh, as everybody right. gets in our age group, we uh, have some health issues yeah, come yeah. and go. So yeah. right now, I'm in good shape. Yeah, yeah. I figure I got another hundred thousand left on me. <laughs> The warranty hasn't run out yet. <laughs> I hope not, man. Yeah, I hope not either. Yeah. I, 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 I hope I got a lot of living to do just like oh, you, man. Oh, sure, yeah. Absolutely. Tell a little history of how you started with KISS and doing security. Did you first do security with KISS or you started with other bands? No, and then I, I uh, Gene and Paul? I okay. ran. I, I, was, I lived in New Jersey. Right. Worked in New York. I did uh, concert halls. I was, I was working all the concert halls. From that, you meet people, and I wanted to be in the business. Previous to that, I was in a band when I got out of out of high school. Oh, and you played, you played yeah, yeah, I played. I played a little bit. What'd you play? Drums. Uh, drums, uh, drums and percussion. Yeah. But uh, you know, two years down the road from that, the, the guys in the band, two of them were going off to college, so that sort of that was the end of that. Yeah. And at that time, I also realized I want to be in this business, but I'm not talented enough to be on, you know, that side of the thing. I want, right. so I have to figure another way. So I, I was working for the concert halls. I did the Fillmore for a while and a place in New Jersey called the Capitol Theater I wound up running. Oh, yeah. And I ran Roosevelt Stadium right. in the security aspect. And I met certain people through there. And uh, I met uh, the, the um, road manager for the Allman Brothers at the time in 72. And he said, well, come on. Uh, he, somebody was, was picking a fight with him backstage after the show. And I got rid of that fella. And I come back in and he was impressed because I didn't break the you know, the fella up. And uh, he offered me a job. He said, look, every, he said, I can't offer you full-time right yet. He said, but uh, anytime we're on the East Coast and you get to the show, you got a job. So I started working for them. He gave you a shot. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. And, and then, uh, but that gave, break, me, you know? that gave me an right. insight into more situations. And I was still doing the other things I was doing. And then one of the fellows that I had worked for who had hired me at Roosevelt Stadium... He was a friend with a fellow named Richie Rano, who's in Stars. I know Richie. Yeah, Stars was being managed by a coin management. So Richie told my friend Rick Stewart, he, and his friend as well, he said, come down to the office, I think they have a job for you there working for us, meaning Stars. Yeah. So he went there and he met with Bill Coin, and Coin told him, well, we're not quite ready for anything for them yet. They were still in development. He said, but I can give you a job with Kiss. And that was probably at the very beginning of yeah, Kiss, yeah. right? 73, so I was 74, 74 then, like, yeah. and then he contacted me and said, uh, you know, a little bit further down the road, he says, do you still want to go on the road? I said, yeah. He said, well, I got a position for you. I'm going to be working for these guys here. I said, okay. You know, I was, I didn't care who I worked for. I just wanted to get out there. Yeah. And I went and I was supposed, I got hired for the European tour, which is the first one they did in 76, but they started me in 75 just because I was there and available. And they got to know who I was, you know, and, and see what I could do. And before they spent all that money to take me to Europe, I wanted to make sure that it was a fit. That was the first tour? It was hotter than hell? Yeah. Still, yeah, okay. And then it went to Europe? Yes. And then, uh, you know, I figured after, no, no, just Europe. We didn't go to Japan until 77. All right. So then I, uh, when I finished that tour, I thought my, you know, thing was over. But a coin management, you know, they called me and said, uh, be here in two weeks. So in the office, so I went in the office and they offered me a full-time position. I was there for 10 years, something like that. Yeah, you were you know, with them a long time. I went there from 75 to 83. Man. You got the whole history. Oh yeah, and, and it was it, it was definitely 
the time to be with them. I mean, so many things happen so quickly, and and the, in the industry as well. Right, right. I mean, you know, when we went to Europe the first time, you could die to get a Coca Cola, right. you know, for sound check. The, the, the production wasn't there yet, and I mean, I remember the, either the second time or even the first time when in Germany we were knocking out the power at the at certain places because it was more power than the city was drawn. Yeah. You know, so it was kind. Of, it was interesting. You know, when you when you see those things happen, and it was just a whole the, the whole situation with them. I mean, they were. They were on their way up, you know, and we were the same age. You know, Gene's a little bit older than me. Yeah. Peter was older than everybody, you know. So. But, uh, you know, Paul and, and Ace are the same age as me. Right. So we had that in common as well. Even though I worked for them, we were still of the same mindset in certain areas. Now, was it just like just you as the security? You were no. one guy? Or they had, Rick, you had a crew? Rick or and were, me was the original two, you know. He was the original and I was the second guy. Then when we come back to the States after Europe, we picked up another fella named Eddie Belandis. We had another fellow before him named Jolly, who uh, was friends with the guys from Cheap Trick. But he was more of a, a technical guy. He was more stage and lighting and things like that, sound. So, but he was big as hell. He was, he was a really big guy. Uh, so he was there for a little bit, but then he went on to do the things he wanted to do. So he picked up Eddie Belandis, and he was a good fit. So, you know, then there was three of us. And Rick left to go do something with stars, and I needed, at that point, it got to be, a coin sat me down and said, look, you know, you and Eddie can't cover the four of them, because now, well, they got they got too diverse. You know, in the beginning, everybody was sort of going together, you know, and, and going to see the same sort of situations. Uh, but then it got to be where they were going in different directions. So we need that, we had to, you had to cover them. So we had to hire two more fellas, and we did that. They shot up pretty fast. Oh, right yeah. After the Alive One album, then they really, yep. you know, they blew yeah. up. Yeah, that was huge after that. Yeah. And, 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 so and, and they had great, great opening acts. You know, they had Wob Seeger and the Silver Bullet Band, and they had uh, um, uh, Cheap Trick. That's and those are all... talks about it. We took all those guys on the road, right? Oh, yeah. And they, guys, right? Absolutely. John Cougar Mellencamp opened yeah. for them. Sticks wow. opened for them. <laughs> you know? So it was an interesting conglomeration of things that went on and again the industry was growing I mean, we went for, I went with them from playing places like this almost you know 3,000 seats 4,000 seats to they became headliners and you know not long after that we're in arenas and you're like when did that happen you know the biggest shows you pretty much was the ones that when you went to Europe that was like the biggest show that they no, ever did the biggest well, shows they you know, did in the beginning in, in, well in the beginning yeah because well they were always you know you remember if you if you listen to what the band says especially Gene and Paul Gene in particular he wanted each time to be better than the last time in his mind so whatever they could do to embellish the set or, or do something that perhaps wasn't done before to, to give the fans a different aspect, they were going to do it. They were going to try it. You we went on to be like the Beatles, bigger than the Beatles. Oh, yeah, I think so. When we went to Australia, that was their Beatlemania. Yeah. It truly was. It, it, I mean, if you look at footage from when the Beatles went there, and you look at the footage from 1980 when the band, when Kiss first went there. Yeah. Notice I keep calling them the band. That's all I know. Um, yeah. Oh, and Japan. Japan was Kabuki City, you know? And you see the difference in cultures. You know, we'd walk out on the street. We're walking down, walking down the shopping ginges, and the uh, the fans would follow us. But if we stopped and we turn around, Gene loved to do that. He'd turn around and look at them, and they'd all do this, and he'd be going, "Come here," and they wouldn't come. You know, and it was a matter of culture. Yeah, they weren't going to do that. You know, so it was kind of it was fun to watch. But we we going, "Come on, we, we're not going to bite you." You know, we'll, we'll, you know, he's going, "I'll sign," you know, whatever, and. Um, we had good fun all the time we went. Though, man. You were a big dude. How much did you weigh at that time? And you were 70. Like, and, I, and I was in good shape, too, yeah, then. Yeah. You know, I, was, I, was, I went to the gym, you know, all that kind of stuff. Wasn't a gym rat, but I went to the gym. So uh, tell me, like, a couple of, uh, like, one incident story. Like, you know, you always have to watch, let's say, members in the band. Okay, uh, one, uh, who's the one? In the yeah. book. We were at uh, the L.A. Coliseum. No, the Forum. First time we played there, we played there. They had three dates, I think, or two. <laughs> First night, it's encore time. 
Technology was a little bit older then. So the fog machines were 55 gallon drums filled with uh, dry ice in a, in a basket, and you'd put a solution in there, which would cause the ice to fog. Now, uh, it also gave off water and heat. So there's puddles everywhere. So at the end of the first song, yeah, end of the first song of the set, right? We're going to be leaving. 1977, I think. Or 76, could be. Yeah. And uh, the band's just about to finish the song. Guy jumps onto the back of the stage. And I'm over on Gene's side, but I see him. So I go after him. I catch him by the scruff of his neck. And when I grabbed him, I hit the puddle. And off we went right through the amp rack, the two of us. And, and I got up and I said, oh, shit, I'm fired now. And I, I walked him off stage, got rid of the guy. The band went off. You go back to the dressing room, wait. And I'm walking down the hall, we're going, well, I guess I'm going home. And, and they come out and they're laughing and they're going, now we're going to have to put that in the show. <laughs> I went, that through, was your job. I went through Ace and, 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 and Paul's Amprax, right. you know. So, yeah. yeah, well, that was my job, but it wasn't <laughs> it was supposed no, to happen quite that way. Yeah. It was, like, very fresh. Yeah. So that's yeah. just one of the But there's always always things that would be, you know, unexpected and uh, things that you would have to do. People, you know, most of the time people wouldn't challenge us, you know, or challenge the authority. But every now and then they did. I remember a place in... in uh, we were at a party in California in, in San Francisco at some, you know, uh, club. And we're sitting around there and somebody kept stealing, um, I think it was Peter's drink. And we couldn't figure out who. It was an outdoor setting. It was a bar and then we were outside, you know. And one of my guys uh, figured out who it was and went after him. So then I went after him. So I caught them by this back gate-like thing. And he gives them to me, and I picked him up, and I threw him out the door. I mean, physically, up in the air. And he landed in a garbage can. So my guy thought that was, just, that was the best thing since sliced bread. That's hysterical. And, and, I mean, it wasn't planned. It just sort of happened that way. And then the guy from the club comes up to me and says, Why are you guys doing that? And we explained to him. And he said, Well, that's my guy's jurisdiction. I said, Well, you better get your guy to do their job because they obviously ain't working. I'll take their pay for tonight then. Because besides being, a, you know, on the tour with them, you were like pretty much their personal security. You yeah. were with them all the time. Yeah, we. It was that, and you're 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 sort of like you're not true family, but you become sort of family because you're looking at, you know, you're celebrating holidays together because you're not home, and you had just have each other, and you and even with the road crew in the early days, we it was it was a solid fitting of that. It was like everybody had everybody's back, no matter what was going on, you know. And, uh, but, you know, we were all staying together then, too. So, man, when we had a day off, things did get a little out of hand. We were the rolling frat party. That's why you got to come out and you got to put your memoirs and, and remember them and write them all down yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and get them in a book. Oh, because yeah. I think people would enjoy reading that. And, 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 and at that time, first year, they had a, a wardrobe guy, who, uh, homosexual, he was gay. And, uh, he liked to dress up like Carmen Miranda, which I have no problem with. It's his preference. But we're in Texas in 1976, going to a truck stop. And the other guys in the crew on the bus come to me and say, you got to talk to him, John. And I said, why? What's the matter? He says, we're going to a truck stop in his Texas. I said, yeah, so. Said, well, but they're going to kill him. I said, and then us too. I said, all right, I'll take care of it. So I talked to him. And his name was Tony. And I said, Tony, look. I says, you know we don't care what your preference is. I said, but these fellows down here are probably not going to see it your way. So I suggest strongly that you put on regular clothes. <laughs> At least to go get something to eat. When we come back on the bus, knock yourself out. You know, and that's the way we got along. We were, I mean, this band had never been judgmental about any of that stuff. But you had to deal with the times. You know, and there were still people who had short hair. And they thought you had long hair. You were, you were something else anyway, whether you were or not. And then they come off the bus looking like Carmen Miranda. They would have ran them up the flagpole. You too, because when Gene and Paul, and, you know, and Ace and Peter first started out, they had the mystique with the makeup. Oh, Nobody yeah. really kind of knew who they were, but they knew pretty much. Hey, these guys are rock stars. In the beginning, yes. Know, yeah. But and then and then since they were from New York, 
in the bigger cities like New York or Chicago or L.A. for sure, they're used to having famous people around, so it wasn't wasn't that much of a thing. Too, huh? you, know? you had the famous photo. You always like covering Gene up. And oh have yeah, stuff oh. And, and 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 he he was pretty good at all of them. Yeah. He was always conscious of that. Wow. Some of the others, not so much. That would never work today, you know. No, it's never. like right. you know, I've, I've been asked that question a number of times, never. and I have no idea how I would make that work. Wow. I mean, I've 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 actually sat down and thought about it, yeah. and I went, it, there, "There's just no way." There's, everybody has access to a to a phone, uh, camera, right. and the and they're everywhere, right. and the the mentality of the media is different. I mean, the media, as much as they would have liked to got them without their makeup. Right. There was a situation there underlying. They knew that if they did that right. and published it, then what are they going to do? Right. Then, then that whole mystique thing doesn't work for anybody anymore. Right. In particularly them, they're not going to sell the magazines so, that they want to sell. That kind of stuff. So Carol Ross had a lot to do that. You remember Carol? Huh? Carol was the PR. Oh, yeah. She did. I a love lot Carol. Of Carol was a great, great, great person. Yeah. And yeah, we, you know. All of those things that were, were learning experiences because nobody ever had this before. You had people like Elvis who traveled in a, in a bubble, more or less, but that's the way he wanted it, and they could create that. He had the money to do that. But, you know, these guys were trying to do normal things, and we did. We'd go out bowling, you know, or go to the movies. But, you know, you have to, we had to figure things out. So to go bowling... You know, we'd go bowling on a Tuesday or Wednesday night or something like that. We call the best bowler out of Gene. All oh, Gene's the best at everything, yeah. if you ask him. <laughs> if you ask him. <laughs> and Eddie used to go after him all the time. Gene's very competitive. Yeah. And, and, you know, they would go, they would go, you know, had it tooth and nail. I would never play racquetball with Gene. He'd take your head off. He'd ask me if you I said, no, Eddie will play with you. I ain't going to do that. He ran in his cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, um, yeah, you know, we, we would try to do things as normal as possible. But you had to do a little planning. You know, we'd find out, like, if we are going to go bowling. All right, is it league night? You know, that ain't going to work. You know, if it's an, you know, so you want to find, oh, it's an off night. It's, it's kind of slow. Okay, great. So that's where we would go bowling. And in the movies, you know, either me or Rick would go first, buy all the tickets, and we knew what time the thing was going to start, and you know, everybody would show up in mass. They'd get out of the car, walk in, I had the ticket. They'd give the ticket to the ticket taker inside and go. You'd show up in mass? Like, talk in about in that. Mass, like oh, uh, and I'll just, we can get them all in and, and, and then, you know, people go, who's that? And by that time, they're gone. Yeah, yeah. And you do the same thing in reverse. When the credits start rolling, you're out the door. <laughs> we already can figure out who it was, you know? We look yeah, it up. Yeah. Yeah. So. But we'd screw it up anyhow, because back in the day, the press didn't know who Kiss was. They would, oh, get, no, they they would mix it up. This is. Gene they Simmons, they this is Paul said they would anyway. swap, there would be all the wrong guys. Oh, yeah, or it would be the wrong band altogether. They did that, they published it in New York, in the Post, I think, or the Daily News. They put uh, the guys from the Babies in there, wow. claiming that that was Paul Stanley and, and company. And the first one was the Cream member. Oh, yeah. Cream, right? well, well, the Cream one was them. That's not, they got caught. No, I wasn't there then. I was, that was before my time. Wow. Yeah, well, you were right there. Oh yeah, the close legends, enough. Legends. Yep. Wow, this is great. It's and 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 you what? Well, you're welcome. Thank you. That whole time was for everyone involved was a learning thing, how to do things. You know, even with the music, you know, um, they, they didn't have the the technology that we have today. So you were the, the sound guys were using tape loops and different type of stuff to get it to sound like the album. You know, not fictitiously, but for real. So. It took a lot of work back then to get the shows done. And then you had to deal with... The album sound the way they did with the technology oh, that they yeah. had. It wasn't like today. And, and then, of course, our favorite was the pyrotechnics people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much for the fire uh, marshals, though. That's why you got so many stories. You could stay in here for hours yeah. and hours. I mean, I was there That's it. That. And, and with the job that I had yeah. for the band... It blossomed into knowing everything because I had to know I was responsible, and and because you know they'll, they'll get to a point and they'd be talking to me going, and they'd say, well, what was that? What was that all about? And I would know yeah. because I made it was part of my responsibility wow. to know, you know. You know well, the fire marshal wanted a demonstration because he thought Pete was. Right. We had a guy named Pyro Pete, lovely guy, really cool, yeah. but he had a mohawk, 
and he changed the colors of it probably weekly, if not daily. And he had tattoos on his head. And he was a licensed pyrotechnic. He had all the credentials. But the fire marshal would walk in, take a look at him, and go, you're the pyrotechnic? Like, these people got to be crazy. And then Pete was a great guy, you know. Except he'd smoke when he was making stuff. I didn't want <laughs> And he'd smoke cigarettes. Yeah, you're going to blow us out of these days. Not, you know, yeah, I mean, old, you man. go through all that, and then with the opening acts, I'd have to tell them about smoking on stage and don't smoke on stage. And, you know, around the stage, people would be hanging out wanting to watch the show. Well, you got to get out of this area. It's adultery. It doesn't want people smoking. And, yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't want to smoke because they don't know where the flash pods are. Yeah, yeah. They flick a cigarette the wrong way, somebody's going to have a flash pod blow up their ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that's, that's a whole different ballgame. That was, that was somebody's very, very poor judgment. That, that never should have been done in that place. From what I've seen of it uh, in pictures previous to them playing, I mean, if you looked at that stuff, it, it, that's, that's definitely tempting fate. You know, unfortunately, it went the wrong way. And, and I don't, you know, I really, I don't think it's a blame, blame, it's like, well, you guys, you know, this or that, I think it was just poor judgment. I thought they'd get away with it. With you, the biggest uh, time that you had to really have to use the security at, you know, at all the moments, you know, like the one that stands out the most. Yeah. When uh, one night we were playing Philadelphia um, yeah. at the Coliseum, and um, barricade came apart, you know. So I had to stop the show because we didn't want anybody to get hurt, not the band, but the barricade. It was, it was made to be a freestanding. So that means the sections were put together and there was a plate that dropped down and went out into the crowd. So when it came undone, it affected the stage because now it's moving this way and there were certain anchors to the stage. So it was gonna bend the legs. That was really dangerous. And then, you know, the people on it, you know, they could have got hurt in between those things. So we had to back everybody up. I, I, had, I went and sent a message to the truck drivers who were sleeping. Told them, come out here, I need you. And, uh, you know, they helped get the barricade back together, you know, with the rest of the, the, our stagehands. And um, got everything put back, back together. Uh, there, was, there was things in, in Japan where it was just me and Eddie at the airport. And, he, and originally the band was supposed to get there a couple hours, get through a couple hours earlier. That didn't happen. So we had a, a, a magnanimous amount of people there now waiting for the band. They come walking out. There's no place to go. They get in the limos, and we're surrounded. There's only one road in and out of that airport at the time. So we were stuck for 20, 30 minutes, and these people are beating on the windows, and not in anger, in, in you know, adulation, but we were afraid they were going to break the windows and cut themselves and this and that. But there was nothing we could do. We, uh, we just had to go keep moving. Don't try not to run them over, but, you know, get moving so we can, until we can get in the wind. You were, in the, you were actually in the limos with them? Oh, you yeah. jump in, right? Yeah, another time, we were in L.A., and we went to see ACDC the first time I played the whiskey. So after the show, they went upstairs to talk to them. So I'm outside, and there's two limousines queued up. The people that are there, I don't know whether they knew it was Kiss or whether they were waiting for ACDC, but they're like, just in my way. That was when uh, bon John, uh, bon Scott was still with Yeah, them? That, that was their first yeah. first yeah. time they played the whiskey. Oh, so the I, second, second yeah. Time. So I had to clear the street and I had to do that by myself, which I did. My my fiance was there at the time, who was now my wife. She was like, she never seen me work, and she thought I was going to kill these people or they were going to hurt me. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, essentially, you know, you had to look. You know, yeah, you oh yeah, and that, and that you most of the time, your mustache, but you and that like, most of the time worked to my my advantage. You know, because I stand over yeah, people, right. and when I was bigger physically, you know, I just looked down at you and go, hey, yeah. and hey, yo, it's your decision. Guy. Like with the cameras, I used to say, look, right. you're going to give me the film. <laughs> one way or the other yeah, yeah. I said so if you do it my way you get to keep your camera right. if I have to take the camera from you and take the film out I'm not real technically involved yeah, right. so you're going to get your camera back it may not work again oh, but that's well, your yeah, prerogative they figured out usually they give it up with a problem <laughs> the only thing you say was they maybe run after them then, oh, you know, but I'm going to catch them but I now I was pissed but when you're I got a really them. Nice guy, man. It's like you're totally like a different, uh, you know, personality. That, you know, you you would think the guy would be, you know. And oh, it's yes. like, 
you know. I guess a lot of them found that out even back then, that, you know, I was the, the, the gentle giant, as they recall me. Yeah, well, that's and, why Gene know. and Paul, you know, they yeah, kept, I mean, yeah. They'd be out there beating people up all the time. And some people had that concept. Yeah. You know, they said, well, what do you do? You walk through the, you're through the airport. And, you know, I said, well, if I stopped to beat everybody up with a camera, I'd still be there. You know, I said, and the band ain't going to jump in and help me. They're gone. I said, and that's the idea. We baffle them with bullshit. Yeah. I, I had guys band, who could think, really to like, you know, uh, yeah, but I had guys like, who could think on their feet. They'd go up to you and say, excuse me, you can't take a picture. And people would go, why? Well, didn't you read the paper this morning? The, the Supreme Court passed down the law that even though you're in the public domain, you just can't take their picture. You have to ask them first. And by the time they get finished with all that nonsense, the band's gone, they're in the car, and they just walked away. And the people are going, oh, and they didn't get your shot, so. There you go. That was the whole, the whole idea, <laughs> keep them from getting the picture. Well, this is a wonderful, I want to thank you very much for speaking with me. You're welcome. You know, I want, I want to let everybody know what, what you got going on, so you can let everybody know out there who's watching the interview. Now you have, like, uh, memoirs coming out? Go ahead. Yeah, I got a book coming out. We've been working on it for a while. It's taken a while. I had some problems with the funding. We've, we've since moved on from that right. point. And uh, hopefully I'll have some good news in the next couple of weeks that I'll be announcing the title on the football. Don't have no, no title yeah. yet. No. It's saying it's uh, Big John Hart right here. And you yep. find them out about him online right. at BigJohnHart.com there. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Oh, man, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Same to you. You know, you're a gentleman. Thank you very much. Appreciate you know, it. You're part of history. Great man. Thank Excellent, you. man. All right. All right. You have a great day. And, and you uh, do as well. Nice to meet Enjoy. you again. Are you going on a cruise? Yeah, man. Have a great time. It's the first one. I got to rock best. out, man. You know? It's the best. You'll love it. <laughs> you wanted the best. You got it right there. That's right. Best Thank security you. guy with the kiss there. Thank you. All right. All right. Peace.